Oh, this is weird. All right. Well, um, just excited to be with you all. We had a great practice today. Uh, I was uh, informed that they're going to have a sold out arena. Uh, it's uh, obviously against a team that um, is playing really good basketball. They went through some rough spots early on, uh, except for the, the day they beat us. But uh, they, um, but if you look at their schedule, um, their record from like about mid December uh, till now, they've only got one loss. Uh, it's been absolutely uh, a, a tremendous um, just ascension in how they're playing the game. I obviously know them very well. I coached with AJ, their head coach, all summer long with the U19 World Cup team. I have so much respect for uh, his basketball mind, but also just the way he cares about his kids. So uh, it's just a, going to be a really exciting matchup. I think our players have been really leaning into hostile environments and taking it on as a challenge. And we, we always challenge them to lean into the hard. And this is just another opportunity to do that. So uh, we're really excited. Uh, being here in Brookings, uh, South Dakota, it's snowing here. And I see your background, Mike. It's obviously better weather there in California. Um, but still, you know, we're still playing. We're still playing and we get a chance to uh, improve as a basketball team, to honor our seniors. And uh, we're looking forward to the challenge tomorrow night. Coach, quick question. Um, you obviously played three games on the road in this tournament. And now, as you said, you're going to uh, a packed house. N not, that, uh, not that you guys have complained uh, at all this season, but how has it been prepping, prepping the team for these challenges, going on the road, and especially in the manner uh, that you guys have with having to fund it yourselves? Well, I think the reality, uh, you know, Mike, is it's a real hard line to walk. I want to be really grateful and for this experience, for what we're getting to do. Uh, I am really grateful. Um, I'm also really grateful for our athletic department. They, this is a cost um, to play in this tournament. Um, the reality is the NCAA owns the uh, rights to the NIT for the men. And there actually is a distribution model. You get paid to play in the men's NIT. Uh, most teams will charter. You have this big uh, carrot at the end playing in Madison Square Garden. Um, you know, uh, this, it's, it's a pretty prestigious, even though they would, of course, rather be in, in the NCAA tournament. Um, this, it's still a pretty prestigious event, and they are paid to play in it. In contrast, um, we, are, we have to pay to play in it. Ours is owned by an organization called Triple Crown Sports. I mean, it's not their fault. They have gotten this as they are a for-profit organization. This is the way it's constructed. So they are doing their job. It's not their fault, but it is an inequitable experience. And, and to me, that's what I have a job to lead towards for, it won't obviously affect this group, but for future generations. And so is it ideal if we were to get to play, if we had the chance to win and go on to play four out of six, our six games would be on the road in the NIT. And we arguably are the number one seed. They don't do it the exact same way, but that does, that. I think that should give people pause in terms of equity. But I, I wanna be a, I wanna be careful about that because on the one hand, I want that to change. And even though it doesn't affect our group, it has a chance to affect change for future generations. And at the same time, this is what we earned. We're not gonna make any excuses. We're gonna lean into the hard and we're gonna go have a great experience. And then really quickly, uh, last question for me. Um, what are your thoughts on both uh, Kiki and Gabriella getting uh, co-MVPs? First time that's happened in the McDonald's All-American game. Well, Bruin Nation, get ready. Not just for Gabs and for Kiki, but for our entire class, for the players that we have coming back. Uh, we have a very exciting future. Um, but, you know, we were just thrilled. And you just watched their warmth for each other. We were actually on a, a commercial flight. Uh, to Denver and we were watching the game on the plane and we were taking pictures and screaming and having fun with it and uh, it just was uh, really fun to see them that you know what I love about both Kiki and Gabs and actually the entire class but them specifically in this environment is that um, their character their work ethic their passion to win a national championship at UCLA 
uh, is even greater than their talent. And their talent is pretty darn good as they put on display last night. So uh, really excited. That's an incredible honor. It's an incredible honor for our program, but it's an incredible honor for them and their families. And we couldn't be more thrilled for them. Hi, everyone. Um, I wanted to follow on the talk about the disparities and I had a question for Charisma. You tweeted about the 13 hour travel time. How do you as a player feel like the travel time has impacted your team and what is the importance of using your platform to bring light to these issues? Yeah, obviously the travel time is not ideal um, compared to like a chartered flight for sure. But I think Coach T yesterday before we traveled after practice had a good point in just saying that we should just be grateful and just like do it with joy. And even though it's not what exactly like how we would want it to go, like have fun and make sure that we're, we're super grateful while doing it because we still get to play at the end of the day. So appreciate her saying that, just like reminding us um, that we still have an opportunity to play and compete. Um, um, so yeah, that's been good. And then just, I think that me starting MTAD with Lauren and Cam and Michaela last year has really just opened my eyes a little bit and just speaking up about things that I'm super passionate about and just talking with the team. I think it's important to just bring awareness. And like Coach Corey said, like it may not affect this group, but maybe groups in the future. Um, so just bring an awareness to that so that people in the future could have better opportunities than what we're having right now. I have a quick, sorry. I have a quick follow-up for Jalen. Um, you won the, you are on a team that won the WNIT in 2018. Are you seeing the same equity issues now that there were back then? Um, my experience is a little different. Um, I had the pleasure to play all the games at Indiana at home when I played in WNIT. So we didn't have to travel at all. Um, it was a great experience. We really enjoyed that, but yeah, I didn't, we didn't have to travel. So it was just nice to play in front of the fans and keep playing at home. I think that's a really important distinction. Um, so for instance, tomorrow uh, will be South Dakota State's fourth game in, at home. They will have not have left the road. And you know, you're talking about, not only you talked about our 13 hours of travel time, um, you know, and, and some people have responded on social media about that. And, and it's just, they don't understand the system. The system of how it works in our, in the WNIT is completely different than the NIT. And, uh, and completely different in terms of how the universities have to bid game by game. It's almost like a series of six one game tournaments and you sort of reshuffle the deck, rebid again after each one, then try to find flights. And it's just, it's let alone, even if you had all the money in the world, finding a charter is not easy. I mean, you know, there's just, it's a lot of people that don't understand how difficult it is. So our group yesterday was split up into three groups. So three different travel plans meeting up eventually in Sioux Falls. Um, and so two groups flew through Denver, one group flew through uh, Minnesota, and then we ended up in Sioux Falls and then we drove an hour to Brookings and we got here about 1.30 in the morning. So, um, you know, that you just think about that. We, we think it's an opportunity for us to grow our mental toughness and we're gonna be ready to go. But when you talk about a difference in experiences, and, uh, you know, wanting to have the best student athlete experience and the most competitive equity you can, uh, that it doesn't quite line up. Hey, coach. Um, Hi, David. Hey, um, I've got one a quick one for you. Um, as far as, you know, the play that you've seen on the court um, throughout the WNIT um, and winning, you know, the last couple games on the road, um, you know, as far as with the team kind of being a little healthier now than, than you were earlier in the season, um, just what, how have you seen this group come together? You know, is this kind of what maybe you expected at, at the beginning of the season, you know, the way, the way they've been playing these past few games? Yeah, I think it, it's, it's what I thought we'd be seeing about mid-December, quite frankly. You know, I, if we had, hadn't had any injuries, I thought it would take us some time to mold our group together because we did have so many new pace, pieces. But I th thought this would be about what we'd be seeing, right, going in maybe the end of December, going into Pac-12 play. 
um, you know, we've all understood the adversity that we hit us and, you know, we have to deal with that and move on. Um, but I have been really pleased to see the growth and trajectory. I, I told the team after the Oregon State game, I thought we had ups and downs quite, if I'm being candid, in the, uh, in the Wyoming game. We did not start off very well. I thought we showed incredible grit, toughness, perseverance um, in, a, you know, a huge crowd. Uh, at the highest elevation of any school in Division One, I. I thought they showed a lot of toughness and grit um, down the down the stretch, but we didn't start out very well. I didn't think we executed our scouting report and um, played with as much fire as I thought we could. And thankfully, we got it, you know, later on. But after the Oregon State game, I told them it was one of the best executions of a scouting report. The steadiness, the poise that they showed. I think that would be a word that I really see is maturity and then poise um, that I'm seeing through this group. So really fun though. I mean, it seems like even today in practice, I thought we were growing tremendously just in terms of uh, offensively um, trying to find mismatches against teams that switch, uh, hunting for the paint, even if it takes us deeper into the shot clock. I think you have to be able to execute in the quarter court when you come to uh, NCAA tournament play and championship play in our case, the NIT. And so I, I'm seeing growth every single day, and that's been what's really fun to be a part of. And I got one, a quick one for uh, Charisma and Jalen. Um, you know, as far as, you know, what you're seeing on the court, you know, what, what have you been seeing as far as, you know, the way this team is coming together these past few games? And then kind of moving forward, you know, back during um, when this team last won the WNIT, I believe, you know, 2015, um, that, you know, did, did a lot for the program. And as far as going forward, you know, just how, as far as, you know, you advance in this, this um, tournament this year, just how do you, how do you see that impacting the program moving forward? Okay. Um, I think, well, first, I think for the, the program moving forward, I think this will be very helpful to the people that will be here on the team next year um, in terms of chemistry and just, um, how we do things. I feel like the last couple of weeks, we've been really turning into who we say we want to be. So I think moving forward, that'll be helpful just to show the people coming in, like, this is how things are going to be next year. This is how we're going to get things done. Um, and then even before the NIT started, we watched a video uh, about the last team from UCLA that was in the WNIT and I think just like the things that they had to say, I think Jordan Canada was in the video and she was talking about her experience um, and just how much it's helped this program. I think, at least for me, that's just made me want to come out here and win, um, even if it's not affecting the group that I'm playing with right now, but the groups in the future. Yeah, I 100% agree with Charisma on that. Um, like Grace was saying, uh, I've been a part of WNIT win um, at Indiana in 2020. 18, I think it was. Um, so yeah, I just know from that experience how much it helps the program, how much bigger it is um, than just ourselves as individuals. Um, and having that experience, that foundation that is set, moving the program forward and the girls coming in next year and how we held ourselves the years coming from that win. So it's super important for us to go out here and win this thing and just realizing that it's bigger than us. A question for coach. Um, this is a team you've seen before, obviously a while ago now, but is there anything you take away from that or is it just so far removed now that it's almost irrelevant? Well, I wouldn't say irrelevant. I think that we, um, you know, we definitely, I, I actually text their coach AJ last night and go, wow, our teams are both really different. You know, um, you know, I think that uh, neither of us were playing our best basketball back in November uh, when we met. Um, but I do think there's things to be, I definitely has helped in our game planning just to have that familiarity point, to have that reference point. Uh, we actually run a lot of similar looks. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be a matter of, uh, you know, who can scout best. I think it's going to be about really execution by the players. Uh, they're really, I mean, they're, they're uh, the second, they actually on ESPN the other night during the, um, the UConn, uh, North, North Carolina State, they said these are the two most uh, efficient teams offensively in the entire country. And actually, that's almost correct. It, they're, um, but South Dakota State, they're the second most effective team offensively in the country. And they get on top of that being totally efficient in how they shoot, 
Um, but they also um, are this, what they get about, I think 39% of their offensive misses, they get second shot opportunities. So they're a great offensive rebounding team. Um, they, I just have tons of respect for them, but I told our team, you know, uh, we're pretty darn good. And so we have to go and execute our game plan and make them guard us. Um, but I think, you know, both of us like to spread the floor. We um, want to shoot the three. We want to attack to the paint. Um, you know, there's a lot of similarities. We're both very versatile. Uh, we switch a lot of screens. So I think it's really going to be a player's game. It's going to be a game where the players have to go out and play to their strengths, use each other. Uh, as, as we always say, the tougher, more together team wins. And we've got to be a very connected group. We've got to be better together than we could ever be individually. Um, and uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere. I mean, it's sold out. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, really loud and fun. And, and, you know, when you're a little kid growing up, you grow up wanting to play these kinds of games in March. And they are, a, they are a, 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 I will say, I think both of us should be playing in the NCAA tournament. You know, I watched their game, their last game uh, against South Dakota, and that South Dakota ended up being a Sweet 16 team and almost beating Michigan in the Sweet 16. And their only loss in conference was to South Dakota State. I mean, they're a really good basketball team. And so what a great opportunity for us. And so, yes, um, I think that's a long answer to your question. But the reality is, is that there are things to learn from our November matchup. But I just think this is going to be a player's game and it's going to be about which team can execute and which players can make plays to their strengths. Is there anybody else who has questions for us? Well, if you don't, just thank you. As usual, um, it just is such a big deal. I've been doing a lot of talks on this equity, um, these ex equity issues and the coverage and still on a national scale, only 4% of um, sports covered on television are of women, you know? And I just, um, there's a lot of things that still need to be done. And, and believe me, I always tell our team, we need to live in the healthy tension. Um, we need to be thankful for how far we've come. Oh my goodness, we have made so many changes and we have a much more equitable experience than the generations before us. And we need to be grateful and full of joy for how far we've come. And we need to have a relentless quest of how far we still have to go. And we wanna live in that healthy tension between those two areas. And one of the things that we really need to continue to grow in is the people to be exposed to our great sport and to the stories of our great women. And so I just wanna say thank you to all of you for being a part of our relentless quest um, to grow our game, to grow our sport and to tell the, um, the stories of spectacular young women like Jalen and Charisma. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being with us. Thank you for continuing to cover this team and this sport and we need you to keep it up. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. And we'll see you uh, hopefully tomorrow night. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye now.